My question is, how do you see the current U.S.-China internet company's valuation and the price disparity? Given there has been many uncertainties, such as geopolitical tensions, significant cost optimizations with leaner U.S. tech firms, while China tech has been through all that already. Thank you. Charlie, you want to? Well, there's been some tension in the economic relationship of United States and China. I think that that tension has been wrongly created on both sides. I think we're equally guilty of being stupid. If there's one thing we should do, it's get along with China. And we should have a lot of free trade with China in our mutual interest. And I just can't imagine. It's just, just so obvious. There's so much safety and so much creativity that's possible. Think of what Apple has done by engaging in a partnership with China as a big supplier. Yeah. It's been good for Apple and good for China. That's the kind of business we ought to be doing with China, and more of it. And with everything that increases the tension between the two companies is stupid, stupid, stupid. And ought to be stopped on each side. And each side ought to respond to the other side's stupidity with reciprocal kindness. That's my view. And it creates one enormous problem, of course, which is that you have the two superpowers of the world, and they know they have to get along with each other. E either one can destroy the other. And they're going to be competitive with each other. Uh, but part of it is trying, always in a game like that, is trying to judge how far you can push the other guy without them reacting wrong. And, uh, you know, if either side is a bully and some ways they can get away with it to an extent because the alternative is would drive them both into destruction. But if they push it too far, they increase the probability that something really does go wrong. So it's a, you know, it's one of those game theory dilemmas. But you really need the leader of both countries. Uh, and you need the populace to understand at least the general situation in which these countries are going to operate over the next century and know that, that some leader that promises too much can get you in a hell of a lot of trouble. And that, like, you know, that you've got one kind of a system that gets this leader one way, and you've got another system that gets this leader another way. And keeping keeping either side from trying to play the game too hard uh, and thinking the other side will, will go along, you know, it's like playing chicken, you know, and driving toward a cliff. So it is, if you've got any diplomacy skills, persuasive skills, or anything like that, you really want people that will convince the other country as well as his own or her own country, that, that this is what we're engaged in. We've got to do it right. We won't give away the store, but we won't try and take the whole store either. And, and uh, it, it, we're, we, we're just at the beginning of this, uh, unfortunately. And my, I mean, we've, we've learned what the situation was. It used to be the Soviet. And, and uh, mutually assured destruction was our policy then. And, that kept a lot of things from happening, but it also came with a very, very, very close call uh, with Cuba. And uh, these are not, you know, these are different games than existed hundreds of years ago. You could, you know, Britain might rule the seas or France or Spain, but, but now you're playing with a game that you can't really make a huge mistake in. And I think that, that that should be, the better that's understood in both countries, the more the leaders feel that their citizenry does understand that, 
the better off we'll be, and that a lot of demo, uh, 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 demography or the a lot of a lot of inflammatory speaking, but a lot of authoritarian action. I mean, it, it all carries its dangers, and the world has stumbled through the years post-1945 with a lot of close calls from the, in the nuclear arena. And now we've got pandemics and we've got, we've got cyber and a whole bunch of other things. So we've got more tools of destruction than the world's ever had. And it, it's, it's imperative that China and the United States both understand what the game is and understand that you can't push too hard, but we're going. But both places are going to be competitive, and both can prosper. That's that's what really is. That's that's the vision that is out there. That China will have a more wonderful country. The United States will have a more wonderful country, and 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 the two are not just compatible. They're almost imperative. Uh, in terms of uh, what's going to happen in the next 100 years or so. And uh, uh, I think that the leaders of both countries have got an important job in, in having that understood and not to do inflammatory things. And we'll see whether the luck that has taken us from 1945 to present holds out and, and I think we can affect to some extent that luck.